Once again, and welcome to the Maritime Teletrack Network from wherever you're joining us throughout the Maritimes. And uh, we're very pleased you could be here with us for this chart of harness racing 12 dashes coming up this afternoon from Exhibition Park Raceway in St. John, including the Atlantic Sire Stakes Championship for two-year-old pacing fillies today. And they're going for a purse of almost $14,000, so it's going to be a tremendous race. We do have some program changes to pass your way here this afternoon, and the starters for the first of 12 dashes uh, will be parading very shortly. So whether you're in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia this afternoon or Bleacher Sports Pub in Woodstock, uh, we're glad you could be here and wish you the very best of luck all afternoon long. I'm Chris Connor, and I'll be joined by Brent Briggs for most of the afternoon. He'll offer some handicapping tips as the day goes along. First of all, in race number two, we have an owner change, and it's on horse number eight. That's the eight horse. Uh, Forest Hill Rumpus is now owned by Wayne Hubbard of St. John. He is also the trainer of record on that horse. That's race two. Number eight, Forest Hill Rumpus, the owner, should be Wayne Hubbard. In the sixth race of the day, a scratch here, it's the sixth horse, Hughes Return. Hughes Return is a judge's scratch, and he will be replaced by a horse off the also eligible list. West River, again, for wagering purposes, should be referred to as horse number nine, but of course he will lead from post position number six, and West River, again's driver this afternoon will be Tony Haig. Tony Haig to drive West River again in the sixth. Race is seven, eight, Nine and ten are all clear as far as changes go. Now to race number 11, the big feature of the day. Again, it is the Atlantic Sire Stakes Championship Final for the two-year-old fillies, and we have a horse that's had to be scratched in this race. It's number four, Northern Velvet, and she is a vet scratch due to sickness, so unfortunately she does not go for the big money today. Will be replaced by a horse off the also eligible list, though, and that horse is Gaelic Coffee. So Sean Dooley, very, very happy about that. And if you're watching from Moncton, you'll be cheering on for Sean. Uh, for wagering purposes, again, this horse will be referred to as horse number eight, I think. But I'll check that for you before we get too far along in the card. Of course, uh, Gaelic Coffee will leave from post position number four. And uh, Sean Dooley will be doing the driving on her. So that's it. Uh, race number 12 is also clear of changes. We'll be turning things over. Andrew Cromwell is your track announcer today, and uh, we'll be bringing you all the excitement, have a few drivers along for some interviews to talk to them about uh, prospective drives that they have during the day. Danny Romo is here with us, Albert Bernard as well from PEI. So it should be a great one. Uh, lots of sunshine again. It's about 8 degrees Celsius here in St. John. Beautiful fall day. We've been really blessed with the weather over the last couple of weeks, and uh, it makes for tremendous racing. So limber up your, uh, your handicapping skills, and we'll wish you the very best of luck here this afternoon. Uh, good luck with your selections, and we'll bring you the post parade for the first race here very shortly. Now with the starter for race number one, first of 12 this afternoon, it's the $2,000 claiming pace with allowances. Number one, Omaha Gambler with George Maye of Moncton, the driver, Jill Berrio. The two, Township Jordan, owned by Ronald Dinsmore, the driver, Lonnie Stokes. The three, Haggis, owned by Debbie Mahar, the driver, Steve Mahar. The four is Becker Drummond, owned by Giselle Bernard and Tom Glynn, the driver, Gordy Hennessy. Horse 5 is Management, owned by Art Graham and Steve Morton of Windsor, Nova Scotia. The driver, Brian Moore. 7, Savvy's Advantage, owned by Bernie Charlton, driven by Danny Romo. Horse number 8, Nailers Bobby, owned and driven by Doug Beckwith of Salisbury. 7 starters here in race number 1. One further note, folks. As you can see, no 6 horse here in race number 1. The 6 was a judge's scratch at the time of the draw. Between two down did draw number six, but was a late judge's scratch. That is why there is no six here in race one. Seven starters, we go to post here in about seven minutes' time. And now the starters for our first race approaching the starting gate on this sunny Saturday afternoon, welcoming all those joining us today across the Maritime. On the Maritime Teletrack Network, first of 12 races now at the gate. The gate is moving. We're underway with race one with seven starters. Swinging Sue down is out. There's Omaha Gambler with Jill Berrio, Township Jordan, Lonnie Stokes. Haggis with Steve Mahar. Becker Drummond, Gordy Hennessy. 
Management with Brian Moore. Sathy's advantage in Danny Romo, and from the outside, Neil is Bobby and Doug Beckwith. Eight shutters, first race. Here they come. They're off and pacing from the rail. Omaha Gambler bidding for the early lead. He'll take it. Township Jordan ducking in behind, racing second as they hit the first turn. Haggis has third. That's management racing fourth on the outside. And then Becker Drummond has fifth. Savvy's advantage and the trailer nail is Bobby and they pass the eighth and head to the quarter. Omaha Gambler sets the early pace. He has a two-length lead up the backstretch. Township Jordan second. Haggis third. Management looks for finds room along the rail in fourth and they race by the opening quarter in 30 seconds flat omaha gambler now opens up his lead now two and a half as they drive into the turn to the three eighths omaha gambler and township jordan racing in second haggis has third management under a tight hold fourth becker drummond racing fifth and they race around the turn they're past the three eighths and down the stretch they race for the half with omaha gambler still setting the pace on top by two Township Jordan and Haggis third. Here comes management. Off the rail, challenging from fourth. Becker Drummond following fifth. The half and 101 and two. Then Savvy's advantage and nail is Bobby. And they hit the turn for the second time and head to the 5 8. Omaha Gambler is lead now a length and a half, and they're by the 5 8. Township Jordan second. Management on the outside comes to third. Then it's Haggis racing fourth up on the inside. Now Haggis is back to third. Management racing fourth. Becker Drummond tips out three wide fifth. Savvy's advantage and nail is Bobby. Town 31 and three, the three quarters. Township Jordan trying to catch the leader, Omaha Gambler. Omaha Gambler still with two links on the field. Township Jordan and Haggis racing third. Becker Drummond has fourth and they're by the seven eighths. Omaha Gambler takes the length and a half lead through the stretch. Township Jordan out to challenge from second. Haggis is third. Omaha Gambler. Township Jordan on the outside challenging. Haggis third, but Omaha Gambler holds the charge, and here they are. Omaha Gambler wins it. Township Jordan, Haggis, and Becker Drummond, Neil is Bobby. Management, Savvy's advantage. Time for the mile, 2.02. parade back now the winner of our first race of the afternoon it's number one Omaha Gambler Omaha Gambler is a big gelding eight years by Armbro Omaha out of Chestnut Hill she by Albatross owned by George Maillet of Moncton trained by Mike Morris Jill Mario Drive it's the 16th win of the season for Omaha Gambler this afternoon in 202 the horse's sixth win in its past seven starts one Omaha Gambler and Jill Barrio. Now the setters for race number two. It's a 1250 claimer with allowances going for a purse of $600. Horse number one, Brian and the Boys, owned by John McMillan, the driver Elmore White. Horse two, Mystic Ideal, owned by Joanne Freeze of St. John, the driver is Steve Mahar. Horse three, American Image, owned by Joanne Davies, and the driver is Brian Moore. Four, Touch of Blue, owned by Brian Sterling, the driver is Lonnie Stokes. Five, Exeter Romar, owned by Kermit Allen, Sedgwick, Maine, and John Davidson. The driver is Tony Watson. The sixth, Red Rag Jean, 
owned by Bernie Charlton of Dartmouth. Jill Berrio in the sulky. The seven horses in Vernes Beauty, owned by Donald Kerr of St. John. The driver, Rick Armstrong. And horse number eight, Forrest Hill Rumpus, owned by Wayne Hubbard of St. John. The driver, Albert Bernard. Race number two, we've got eight starters going to post in about seven minutes. Starters for the second race are at the gate. Gate is moving. We're underway with race two. Eight starters. Brian and the boys, Elmore White. Mystic Ideal with Steve Mahar. American Image, Brian Moore. Touch of Blue with Lonnie Stokes. Exeter Romar, Tony Watson. Renrag Jean with Jill Berrio. Inverness Beauty, Rick Armstrong. And from the outside, Forest Hill Rumpus and Albert Bernard. Eight starters, race two. Here they come. They're off, and as they leave the line, touch of blue, and Exeter Romar pacing for the top. Driving into the first turn, touch of blue now grabs the top. Exeter Romar gets to second. On the outside, three wide, that's Inverness Beauty racing on to third as they pass the eighth and head to the quarter. Inverness Beauty gets to the rail. Outside fourth is American Image, Brian and the boys racing fifth. Then it's Mystic Ideal, Renrag Jean, the trailer, as they pass the opening quarter, Forest Hill Rumpus and Touch of Blue takes the field by the first marker in 30 seconds flat. They drive into the turn and head to the 3-8. Touch of Blue with a one-length lead over Exeter Romar. Inverness Beauty has third. American Image racing on the outside fourth. Mystic Ideal moves with cover fifth, and they drive by the 3-8, and they round the turn safely and drive through the stretch for the half. It's Touch of Blue cutting it out. Exeter Romar sitting pretty second. American Image has been outside for the mile and lays third as they pass the half on the outside. The half in 102. Inverness Beauty racing along the rail fourth. Mystic Ideal fifth on the outside. As they drive to the turn, Brian and the boys has sixth. Renrag Jean moves seventh. And the trailer still Forest Hill Rumpus with lots of action on the outside as they pass the five-eighths and head to the three-quarters. Touch of blue, the one to beat. A length and a half lead. Exeter Romar and American Image. Mystic Ideal tips out three wide, challenging from fourth. Inverness Beauty moves up the inside fifth. Ren Rag Jean, Brian and the boys, and Forest Hill Rumpus. 133 is the three quarters. They drive into the turn. It's still touch of blue. Exeter Romar staying very close and off the rail. Comes out to challenge as they hit the seven eight. Mystic Ideal challenging third and off the top turn. Here they come for home. It's Touch of Blue, Exeter Romar, and Mystic Ideal. Touch of Blue, Exeter Romar, Mystic Ideal. The law, they're all there as we drive to the wire. And here they are at the line tight. We'll probably need a picture between Exeter Romar and Mystic Ideal. Then Touch of Blue, Renrag Jean, American Image, Brian and the Boys, Forest Hill Rumpus, Inverness Beauty. Time for the mile, 204. Judges have called for a win photo in the second race between horses two and five. A win photo between the two and the five, Mystic Ideal and Exeter Romar. From the second race, number two, Mystic Ideal has been claimed by Tim Merzetti. And number four, Touch of Blue, has been claimed by Charlie Ross. Two claims in the second race. The two Mystic Ideal claimed by Tim Rossetti. Number four, Touch of Blue, has been claimed by Charlie Ross.
second race. In a photo, the winner number two, Mystic Ideal. Round gelding seven years by Big Towner out of Native Gem. She by Tar Heel. From the Joanne Freeze of St. John, trained and driven by Steve Mahar. Tenth win of the season for Mystic Ideal this afternoon in 2.04. From the second race, the two Mystic Ideal claimed by Tim Rossetti, also from race two. Number four, Touch of Blue, has been claimed by Charlie Rock. Campaign. I like the old and we pray for you now. The setters in race number three. It's a condition pace going for a purse of $850. The one Miss Speedy Spud owned by Sherry Lynn Miles. The driver Lonnie Stokes. The two Sit and Wave owned by Bob Shannon of Fredericton. Sean Shannon, the driver. Horse three Cocan Robin owned by Leo Gallant. The driver Ulyss Gallant. The four Noble Chance owned by Randy Blanchard. The driver Brian Moore. Five, the three-legged pacer, Provisions to Win, owned by Bruce Burnham, Robert Tilly, and Gordon Cobham, the driver, Jill Burial. The six, Star Track, owned and driven by Doug Beckwith of Salisbury. Seven, Lighting, owned by Ron Legere, the driver, Gordy Hennessy, and Horse Eight, Sea Wind Bubbling, owned by the Sea Winds AMG Stables, the driver, Steve Mahar. Eight starters here in race number three. We go to post with the third in about nine minutes. We're underway with race number three with eight starters behind the gate. Miss Speedy Spud with Lonnie Stokes. Sit and wave, Sean Shannon. Cocan Robin and Ulysses Gallant. Noble Chance, Brian Moore. Provisions to win, Jill Berrio. Star Trek, Doug Beckwith. Lighting with Gordy Hennessy. Sea Wind Bubbling, Steve Mahar. Eight starters for the third. Here they come. They're off, leaving the line. Sit and wave, racing for the top. Cocan Robin is there, and from the outside, Lighting, as they drive three wide into the first turn, Sit and Wave takes the initial lead, Cocan Robin to second, Lighting now racing third, and they pass the eighth, that's Lighting going on from third, looking for the top as they race up the back stretch for the quarter, now Lighting takes command, the Sit and Wave will settle for cover in second, Cocan Robin has third, Miss Speedy Spud racing fourth, then Noble Chance, Provisions to win. Star Trek and Sea Wind Bubbling trails the field quarter in 30 and 2 fifths. And they drive single file into the turn to the 3 8. Cutting it out is Lighting on top by a length. Sit and wave and Cocan Robin third. Here comes Miss Speedy Spud off the rail from fourth. And they're by the 5 8. Noble Chance moving with cover fifth. So is Provisions to win. Racing down the stretch for the half and cutting it out still. Lighting on the outside comes Miss Speedy Speedy Spud to second. On the rail, Sit and Wave is right there, third, and they're by the half. Noble Chance moves with cover fourth on the outside. The half and 102. Cocan Robin fifth along the rail. Then it's Provisions to win. Star Track and trailing, but moving on the outside. Sea Wind bubbling, driving into the turn. Lighting takes them by the 5 eighths, and they race to the three quarters. Three parts of a length. It's Lighting on top. Miss Speedy Spud laying second on the outside. Sit and Wave. Looking for racing room on the rail third. Noble Chance has fourth on the outside. Cocan Robin fifth. Provisions to win has six. Three quarters. One thirty-two and two, and they drive to the turn. Lighting still leading by three quarters of a length. Outside Miss Speedy Spot is hanging, and Sit and Wave will look for some racing room as they hit the stretch. Cocan Robin provisions to win, but they round the turn. Lighting takes them home. Lighting in the Miss Speedy Spud. Sit and wave. On the outside, provisions to win. Closing strong. Lighting, provisions to win. Miss Speedy Spud. And here they are. At the line, looks like lighting. Provisions to win. Miss Speedy Spud. Sit and wave. Cocan Robin, Star Trek. Noble Chance and Sea Wind Bubbling. Time for the mile, 2.03.
we parade back now the winner of the third race. It's number seven, Lighting. Lighting is a chestnut gelding four years. By Storm Damage out of Kodachrome, she by No Noose. Owned by Ronald Legier of Riverview, trained and driven by Gordy Hennessy, and it's the horse's fifth win of the season. This afternoon, winning in 203, number seven, Lighting and Gordy Hennessy. Now the setters in race number four, race four, condition pace, going for a purse of six hundred and fifty dollars. The one horse, Cocan Cover Boy, leads by John Gallant, the driver, Eulis Gallant. The two, T D Gabriel, owned and driven by Doug Beckwith of Salisbury. The three, Star Glint Hanover, owned by Sandra Foley, driven by Steve Mahar. Four, Lone Water Angie, owned by Jerry Shannon, the driver, Sean Shannon. Five, Dairy Town Jean, owned by Gerald Alexander of Sussex. The driver's John Davidson. Six is Double Jeopardy, owned by Brian Foster of Hampton, Rick Armstrong aboard. Seven, Weemod, owned by Deborah Kirkpatrick and Ron Robertson. The driver, Bill Robertson. Horse eight, Brend Hanover, owned by Bob Bonus of Kensington, Gordy Hennessy. In the Salty Eight starters here for the fourth. We go to post with the fourth race in about seven minutes. For trackside now with driver Jill Berrio, who's uh, got a very busy day as usual. And Jill, you've had a tremendous season here so far, coming up on 100 wins. Uh, that's got to feel pretty good. Yeah, I've had a great season. Can't complain about that. Great. Everything's going good. I got good horses. That helps a lot. And it doesn't seem to matter. Uh, I mentioned earlier on the program, you've been driving Comedy Hour throughout the season, had a tremendous campaign with him, but you don't mind jumping up behind the 1250 claimers. No, I'll just drive about anything that I can get my hands on. I mean, I'm not fussy that way. Got to drive the bay with the good. For sure. You've got a couple of good ones coming up. Uh, Riverside Marcy is in the next race. Uh, you got a chance to drive her now in a class with all of the other horses being fillies and mares. Does that make a difference in competition? Yes, it does, especially with fillies and mares. You know, she's been racing, te she was racing terrible, and she finally won her last two, but she was, her blood was low, and, you know, she finally where, where she, she, she feels good now, and she, she's competitive good enough now. Riverside Marcy will be trying to win her third straight. Uh, another horse that you've got is coming up in the open class. R.B. Gladimir has got the rail today, and he loves to get off the gate. He's just a nice old horse. He's like a Cadillac. I mean, he's just great. He's got a few problems, but he tries his hard out race after race. Today he's been quite tough. I mean, you know, he, he'll probably hit the board, but I can't see him winning it. There, there are some other good horses in that race that you're familiar with. Oh, yeah. Final Bread, I mean, he's a good horse. He's three-legged, but I mean, he's... Uh, he's he lays over that bunch of horses, and you got Mr. Wood and Calgary Flutie. I mean, they'll go 58, 59 again today, and, you know, he won't be out of place. Are you surprised with uh, the speed that the horse has been going here late in October? Unbelievable. I mean, you know, if you can't go 2-2, two, 2-3, two, two, you may as well stay in the barn, really. Going fast. It's been tremendous uh, last week and this week again, and I wish I had Jill's sunglasses on right now, but another great day right here at EPR. Thanks very much, Jill. Thank you. Okay. Jill Berrio, he's got to drive in the next race with Riverside Marcy. And coming right up, we got about two or three minutes to post now before race number four. We'll give you a look at my selections and those of Brent Briggs and wish you luck with your picks here in the fourth race of the day. Now the starters for the fourth race are at the gate. And the gate is moving. We're underway with race four. Eight starters behind the gate. Cocan Coverboy with Eulis Gallant. T.D. Gabriel with Doug Beckwith. Star Glint Hanover, Steve Mahar, Lone Water Angie and Sean Shannon, Dairy Town Dean, John Davidson, Double Jeopardy and Rick Armstrong, Wee Maud with Bill Robertson and from the outside, Bread Handover, Gordy Hennessy. Eight starters for the fourth race. Here they come. There, off quickly leaving the line. Double Jeopardy pacing for the top. TD Gabriel from the inside can't get there first. Double Jeopardy does. And they take that lead into the first turn. That's Red Handover on the outside. Racing to second. TD Gabriel now third. And they're by the eighth. Star Glint Hanover pacing in fourth. Lone Water Angie has fifth. Then it's Wee Maud, Cocan Coverboy. The trailer Derrytown Dean. They head to the quarter with Double Jeopardy showing the way. Backing off to second. Bread handover, TD Gabriel third. That's the way they are by the opening quarter. It's 30 and two fifths. 
Into the turn, they head to the three-eighths and still Double Jeopardy continues to show the way. Bred Handover staying close in the second and T.D. Gabriel races third. By the three-eighths, Star Glint Hanover fourth and Lone Water Angie pacing fifth and they race in front of the grandstands for the first time. Double Jeopardy in command on top, a length and a quarter. Bred Handover lumbering on in second. Here comes Star Glint Hanover out from fourth. T.D. Gabriel has third though and they race by the half in 102 and four. Into the turn they drive for the second time and continuing to lead is Double Jeopardy on top a length and a half. Bred Handover staying close in second, T.D. Gabriel third. Star Glenn Hanover challenging fourth on the outside as they pass the five eighths. Lone Water Angie racing fifth, Dairytown Dean up to six now on the outside. Wee Maud in the trailer, Cocan Coverboy and they head to the three quarters. Double Jeopardy on top now by two, leading by the three quarters, 135. Into the turn, it's Double Jeopardy and Bred Handover Star. Glint Hanover now comes to third. TD Gabriel fourth, Derry Town Dean racing fifth, but up front is Double Jeopardy moving out. Two and a half lengths is the lead as they round the turn and head for home. Double Jeopardy, Bread Handover. It'll be a battle for third, but Double Jeopardy moves away. Bread Handover, Cocan Coverboy closing strongly for third. And here they are. Up front, Double Jeopardy, then uh, Bread Handover and Cocan Coverboy. Star Glint Hanover, Lone Water Angie, Dairytown Dean, TD Gabriel, Wee Mod. Time for the mile, 2.05. And we parade back the winner of the fourth race this afternoon. It's number six, Double Jeopardy. Double Jeopardy is a big yellow lead four years by Forrest Skipper out of Lady Sajovi. See by Romeo Hanover. Owned by Brian Foster of Hampton. Trained by Rod Gogan with Rick Armstrong driving. It's the second win of the season for Double Jeopardy this afternoon. The four-year-old steps to a new win race record of 205. Number six, Double Jeopardy, Rick Armstrong. We parade now, ladies and gentlemen, starters in race number five. It's for fillies and mares, eight starters for $800. Number one is Cole Sister, owned by Don and Ted Bremner of Gemsag, driver Gordy Tennessee. Two is Sugar Cookie, owned by Mel Land of Hopewell Cape, Frank Fagan, Jr., in the Sulky. Number three, Tarport Sarah Beth, owned by Frank Dunphy of Fredericton. The driver is Lonnie Stokes. Four, Riverside Marcy, owned by B.N. Burnham. R.J. Tilly and G.R. Cobham of St. John. Driver Jill Berrio. Five is Lady Sunset, owned and driven by John Davidson of St. John. Horse six, Hillview Kelly, owned by Stephen Cooper of St. John. The driver is Tim Merzetti. Seven is D.M. Starboard, owned by Galen Dempsey of Rolling Dam. Steve Mahar in the Sulky. And number eight, Springbrook Chip, owned by Pat O'Donnell of St. John. Brian Moore is your driver. Eight starters for the fifth race. Eight starters for race five. Win, place, and show betting along with Quinella and Triactor features in the fifth. 
Post time in six minutes. The top two-year-old filly in the Maritimes this season, Island Ribbon, and it's Albert Bernard from Prince Edward Island here today to talk a little bit about this filly. Albert, uh, she's won 11 of 13. What more can you say about her? How has she developed through the season? Well, thanks a lot, Chris. Uh, first of all, she's uh, a filly that uh, trained real well and uh, had, uh, before even started, showed uh, promises of greatness. She had trained good, was a good gated filly, and seemed to enjoy doing her training early in the year, and uh, which helped, you know. She had a great attitude. You mentioned, uh, we were talking on our way over here about the Dairy Queen for the Colts last week where there was a big upset. Uh, a horse who hadn't dominated the stake circuit all year long was one that uh, got some luck, but yet you were able to maintain your horse's uh, performance level for those big races too. You got to go in the Dairy Queen and that had to be extremely important to you. Well, yes, this year there was uh, an extremely uh, good bunch of fillies this year too, and it, it took an exceptional filly to get the job done and do it all year because uh, if you People will go back and look at all the wicked miles that these fillies have raced this year. This mare of mine has uh, paced more miles, you know, faster than any filly ever was in the Maritime. She holds five track records, and she had to do this to win a lot of these stake races. She had to set records to win them. So uh, does that concern you at all as she approaches a three-year-old campaign, or do you pretty much have to take the money when you get it? Well, we, we're hoping that she comes out of this race today good and sound, and we'll give her a few months off. And, and it's only luck that keeps them going. You know, I mean, you gotta have some good management, all right, but you gotta have a lot of luck in this game to keep them sound and to keep them in top shape when they're race so hard every week, you know, for two-year-olds trucking around. It's tough on them. How's she feeling today? She seemed real good. I was out jogging her, Chris. She was on the iron, she was playing, which was nice to see. Okay, well, we'll wish you the very best of luck. Uh, I wanna ask you, though, too, do you, she gets off the gate so well. Is that something you work on early, early on? I, uh... <coughs> That goes back to uh, my father. He was an awful man for leaving, and uh, I guess I inherited that. Get off the wings and get up handy to the front. Well, they, you make the front, they got to come around you. And they say that that's the key to success in the stakes races, and you've had that all year long. Thank you, Chris. Thanks to Albert Bernard for joining us here today. He's got uh, the morning line favorite, Island Ribbon, and uh, why shouldn't she be? She's won 11 of 13 this year, and of course, uh, the Atlantic Sire Stakes Championship comes up this afternoon in race 11. We'll watch for Albert and uh, seven other extremely talented young horses in that race are going for big money. Right now, though, uh, just a couple of minutes remaining before the fifth race, and we'll wish you good luck with your selections. Here's some... Now the scouters for the fifth race are at the gate. The gate is moving. We're underway with race five. Eight starters are now behind the gate and approaching the top of the stretch. Cole Sister with Gordy Hennessy. Sugar Cookie, Frank Faggot. Carport Sarah Vest with Lonnie Stokes. Riverside Marcy, Jill Berrio. Lady Sunset, John Davidson. Hillview Kelly with Tim Merzetti. DM Starboard, Steve Mahar. And from the outside, it's Springbrook Chip and Brian Moore. Eight starters for the fifth race. Here they come. They're off. Outstanding start as they leave the line. Three of them battling for the top. Riverside Marcy in the middle of the track. On the inside, it's Tarport Sarah Beth. Lady Sunset now racing third. That's Hillview Kelly. Up on the outside to fourth as they pass by the eighth. Riverside Marcy now takes the top. A Tarport Sarah Beth and Lady Sunset pacing third. Hillview Kelly gets to the rail in fourth. Sugar Cookie fifth. It goes Cole Sister off the rail from sixth. DM Starboard has seventh, the trailer Springbrook Chip, and they race by the opening quarter in 30 seconds flat. Riverside Marcy takes the length lead into the turn to the free eight. Riverside Marcy shows the way. Carport Sarah Beth's been sitting pretty and racing in third. Lady Sunset, Hillview Kelly fourth. Cole Sister comes to fifth on the outside. Driving around the turn, they race in front of the grandstand. For the first time and setting the pace is Riverside Marcy. Uh, then Tarport Sarah Beth. Here comes Lady Sunset. Out from third, now to second to challenge for the lead as they pass the half. They're by it. Riverside Marcy is there first in 101 and 2, but Lady Sunset mounting a strong challenge in second as they drive into the turn. Heading to the 5 8. Riverside Marcy, Lady Sunset. Tarport Sarah Beth stays with the leaders in third, and they race by the 5 8. 
Cole Sister has come to fourth on the outside. Hillview Kelly Racing fifth. Then it's DM Starboard, followed by Sugar Cookie and Springbrook Chip. And they head to the three quarters. Riverside Marcy Tarport Sarabeth. Outside third is Lady Sunset. Three wide. A Cole Sister drives on from fourth. 132 the three quarters. They're three wide around the turn. Riverside Marcy pacing out on top. Moving up the inside. Tarport Sarabeth will look for racing room. Lady Sunset Cole Sister is there and they drive around the turn for home. Riverside Marcy. Here comes Tarport Sarabeth out to challenge. Now Tarport Sarabeth to the front. Riverside Marcy. Hillview Kelly is third. And here they are. At the line, Tarport Sarabeth wins it. Then Riverside Marcy and Hillview Kelly, Cole Sister, Sugar Cookie, Lady Sunset, Springbrook Chip, and DM Starboard. Time for the mile, 203. And parading back the winner of the fifth race this afternoon. It's number three, Tarport Sarabeth. A Bay Mare 8. She's by Abercrombie out of Castleton Siren. She by Tyler B. Owned by Frank Dunphy of Fredericton. Trained and driven by Lonnie Stokes. The ninth win of the season for Tarport Sarabeth. Second win in a row for the mayor today. She takes our fifth race in 203. Number three, Tarport Sarabeth and Lonnie Stokes. Result of race five is now official. Here is the official result of the fifth race. Cole Sister was fourth. Sugar Cookie, fifth. Carport Sarabeth, your race winner. Riverside Marcy, second. Lady Sunset was sixth. Hillview Kelly, third. DM Starboard, eighth. And Springbrook Chip was seventh. The race times, quarter. Other setters in race number six. Race number six, position base, going for a first of six hundred and fifty dollars. Horse number one, teed up, owned by Ken Norwood, the driver Sam Hodgson Jr. The two, Lindale Lady, owned by Andrew Ward, the drivers John Davidson. Three, Hillview Joe, owned by Ron Robertson of Bloomfield, the driver Bill Robertson. Four is Light Down, owned by Milton Downey of St. John, the driver Steve Mason. Five, Brighton Sister, owned by Bill Flowers of St. John. Driver Gordy Hennessy. Four seven Spook and Jig Time, only Blaine Haney of Rexton, Debbie Mahar of St. John. The driver Wayne Mahar. Horse eight, Calavrita Ginger, owned by Paul Dares of St. John. The driver Steve Mahar. Horse number nine, West River Again. West River Again owned and driven by Tony Haig of St. John. Eight starters here in race number six, and we go to post in about seven minutes. <laughs> Away with race number six with eight starters. Teed up and Sam Hodgen, Lindale Lady, John Davidson. Hillview Joe with Bill Robertson. Light down, Steve Mason. Right and sister with Gordy Hennessy. West River again, Tony Haig. 
Spook and Jig Time with Wayne Mahar and from the outside, Calavrita Ginger and Steve Mahar. Eight starters for race six. Here they come. They're off, leaving the line. Lindale Lady from post two, driving for it. So is Light Down. Others out there, West River again and Brighton Sister, and they race into that first turn. A bit tight into the turn, with Lindale Lady showing the way. Light Down and West River again gets to the rail, now third. By the eighth pole, that's Hillview Joe, working up from fourth on the outside, going on to third. He'll look for the top as they head to the corner. Hillview Joe bidding for the top from Lindale Lady. Now Hillview Joe shows on top. Lindale Lady racing second. They're by the quarter in 31 and 2. Light down third. West River again racing fourth. That's Calvary to Ginger driving up fifth on the outside, followed by Spook and Jig Time sixth. Then it's keyed up, and the trailer Brighton Sister as they drive around the turn. Racing off that marker now, they race through the stretch with Hillview Joe in command. Lindale Lady, here comes Light Down. Out to challenge from third. Calavrita Ginger racing a fourth. Racing fifth is West River again. Then it's keyed up. Spook and the jig time. And the trailer is Brighton Sister. They pace the half and 102 and four. Into the turn for the second time. They drive to the 5 eighths. Up front, showing the way, Hillview Joe. Lindale Lady and outside, racing third, light down. West River again is outside. He comes to fourth as they head up the back stretch. Calavrita Ginger, three wide fifth, and there's three wide. Heading to the three quarters, Hillview Joe, light down. Lindale Lady, three wide. Calavrita Ginger, fourth. West River again in between horses, racing fifth. Keyed up is sixth. Then it's his spook and jig time and Brighton Sister in a bunch to the three quarters and 135 and they race around the turn. Hillview Joe a length and a quarter. Lindale Lady back to second. On the outside three wide Calvary to Ginger. Light down. Fading in between horses and they round the turn. Here they come for home. Hillview Joe and Lindale Lady out to challenge. Keyed up is now third. Now it's Lindale Lady. Hillview Joe keyed up coming on strong and here they are at the line. Lindale Lady wins it tight for place between Hillview Joe and Keyed Up. And Calavita Ginger, West River again. The spook and jig time. Brighton Sister, light down. Mile 205 and 2. we parade back now the winner of race number six it's number two Lindale Lady a brown mare four years by winner's accolade out of McBam Ellis she by Steady Stone owned by Andrew Ward of St. John trained by Sean Shannon John Davidson drives Lindale Lady picks up her second win of the season a season's best this afternoon 205 and two number two Lindale Lady John Davidson Three for you now. The starters in race number seven, condition pace, going for a purse of seven hundred dollars. The one courageous mod, owned by Jimmy Smith of Fredericton, Chester Eatman aboard. The two Connor, owned by the New Ireland Stable, Danny O'Brien, in the bike. The three, the three-legged pacer, Miss Levy Road, owned by Janet Vincent, the driver Leroy Vincent Jr. The four triple take, owned by Donald Bishop of Fredericton, the driver John Davidson. Five, the three-legged pacer Jabulani, owned by Inez Delaney of St. John. Jill Barrio in the sulky. Six is Jimmy, owned by Brent Briggs of Fredericton, driver Gordy Hennessy. Seven, Edge Water Sambro, owned by Bill Nicholson with Brian Moore in the bike. And eight, Crafty Frank, owned by Robert Hume of Woodstock. 
Steve Mahar in the bike. Eight starters here in race number seven. They go for a purse of $700 and go to post in seven minutes. Underway with race seven, eight starters behind the gate. Courageous Maud with Chester Eatman, Connor and Danny O'Brien. Miss Levy Road, Leroy Vincent Jr. Triple Take with John Davidson. Jabulani, Gil Berrio. Jimmy and Gordy Hennessy. Edgewater Sambro, Brian Moore, and from the outside, Crafty Frank and Steve Mahar. Eight starters for the seventh race. Here they come. They're off from the far outside. Edgewater Sambro bidding for the top. In the middle of the racetrack is Jabulani. Working up the rail, Courageous Maud and Connor is there as they drive into the turn with Courageous Maud. Getting the early lead over Connor, who has second. Jabu Lani gets to the rail third. And they're by the eighth and heading up the back stretch for the quarter. Edgewater Sambro pacing in fourth. Crafty Frank has fifth. Then Miss Levy Road, followed by Triple Take and the trailer as they head to the quarter. Jimmy by the opening quarter. A courageous Maud is there in 30 seconds flat. And she takes them into the turn to the 3 8 Courageous Maud a length and a half. It goes Jabu Lani out from third, now second. Connor is racing third. Edgewater Sambro fourth and Crafty Frank racing in fifth. You'll go back to the final three, about six lengths behind the first five as they round the turn and head to the half with Jabu Lani bidding for the top. Courageous Maud, here comes Connor off the rail from third. Edgewater Sambro moving fourth. And Jabu Lani grabs the front by the half a minute. And two fifths. Into the turn, Jabu Lani and Courageous Maud. Connor is outside, racing third. Heading to the 5 8. Crafty Frank on the inside, fourth. Edgewater Sambro, fifth. And they're by the 5 8 and up the back stretch. They pace to the three quarters. Jabu Lani on top, a length and a corner. Connor has come to second. Courageous Maud starts to fade third. Edgewater Sambro driving fourth on the outside. Crafty Frank moves off the rail from fifth. Three quarters and 131. Jabu Lani. Now a length and a half. Connor and racing on the outside. Third is Edgewater Sambro. Crafty Frank is there fourth. Then it's Courageous Maud fifth. But Jabu Lani has opened up four lengths off the top turn. Here they come for home. Jabu Lani, the one to catch by about five. Connor, Edgewater Sambro, and Crafty Frank. But Jabu Lani steps out. He'll take this one. And here they are. Jabu Lani wins it. Up for second, looks like Crafty Frank, then Connor, Edgewater Sambro, Miss Levy Road, Jimmy, Triple Take, and Courageous Maud. Time for the mile 201 and 4. Judges have called for a place photo in this seventh race between horses 2 and 8, Connor and Crafty Frank. A place photo. Rating back now, the winner of the seventh race is number five, Jabu Lani, a bay horse seven years by Seahawk Hanover out of Woodmere Goldie, she by Trooper Chip, owned by Inez Delaney of St. John, trained by Mike Morris, Jill Barrio driving. So Jabu Lani, first win of the season from 10 start this afternoon in 201 and 4. Number five, Jabu Lani and Jill Barrio.
now. The starter is in race number eight. It's the condition pace going for a purse of $850. You have nine minutes at the Mutuals. About nine minutes for the eighth race. Horse one is Paris Hustler, owned by John Don and Rod Gogan of St. John. Rod Gogan, the driver. The two, Jacob Tutu, owned by Giselle LeBlanc, the driver, Leroy Vincent. Three, Prime Grand, owned by John and John Charles Beliveau, the driver, Jill Barrio. Four, Twinby John Boy, owned by Andrew Simpson and Brian Sterling, the driver, Lonnie Stokes. Five, Bar Harbor, the three-legged pacer, owned by Hubert Thornton and driven by Tim Rossetti. Six, After the Laughter, owned by Mel Blanchard of St. John, the driver is Brian Moore. The seven, Why Worry Us, owned by Clifford Garland of Carboneer, Newfoundland, to be driven by Steve Mahar and Horse 8, March Along Down, owned by Klaus Bishop of Fredericton, Mike Campbell in the Sulky. Eight starters, race number eight, we go to post in about eight minutes. We've got about uh, six or seven minutes of post time now before the next race and a good opportunity for us to chat with Gordy Hennessy. Gordy doesn't have a drive in here and he's been good enough to, uh, to join us. You've had a week now to think about the Dairy Queen Futurity and to me it was just a tremendous story. Two horses that you've driven all season long and both of them ending up in the wind photo. Uh, what kind of a thrill was that for you? Uh, it was something else. I can't explain the feeling coming down the stretch like uh, at the three-quarter pole I, I thought I had a short second and then as we were inching down the stretch, my horse just kept getting closer and closer, and then at the wire, it was so close. Uh, well, you see the photo, eh? it was about six inches difference between the, the first horse and the second horse, and uh, it's just the biggest thrill of my career right now so far to win a race like that, and especially for Romeo Boucher, who supported me all through my career. I was going to say, uh, I remember when you drove autopilot for him, and it's good to see him have some luck with Maritime Bread Horse. Yes, yeah, all the wins that Romeo ever had, that's the biggest purse that he's ever won in the race game, and he was quite excited over that. Did he uh, have some opportunity to talk to you about what a thrill it was to have a son of Chatham Light winning that race? You had such good luck well, with him. Well, the, the funny thing was, right after the race, like, you know what I mean, we all just, you know, gathered our thoughts, eh, and uh, we just said to ourselves, yeah, the old horse done it for us again, because he'd done it, like, so many times for me in the free-for-all ranks, and then there he goes and puts the sun out and done it for me again. He's been super to me, that old horse. If you're uh, new to the Maritime Teletrack Network and new to harness racing, of course, we're talking about Chatham Light, who won three straight McCain Memorials in Woodstock, and he had to be the classiest, or maybe one of the classiest horses you ever drove. Oh, yeah, by far. I'll go a long way to replace that thought. Today, uh, I'd like to talk to you about a couple of drives you got coming up. One is with Jig Time Knievel, and he's got some pretty good breeding, too. Yes, he does. This horse here uh, has a couple of four brothers that are really good, and the horse today is down in class. He's got a really good shot to win today, I feel like. Uh, and uh, the final breath in the top class. Last week, yeah, I rushed him out a little bit too much. Three-legged first time on the half-mile track, and he couldn't handle uh, the turn here in St. John, so I'll be a little more careful today, but I think he'll be there in the end today. You felt that he paced quite well after you got him set last week? Yes, uh, yeah, I'll, give, uh, I'll take all uh, the blame for that one last week. You know, hopefully I can redeem myself today. Okay, well, we'll have a look at that. It's interesting uh, to see him it must be tough for a horse of that age, too, to come off the 5 eighths and race the half mile right away. Oh, it is, and he's a young horse. He's only three years old, and uh, the big adjustment is different uh, when you have to race in, like, uh, the cheaper classes. But today, they're going to go, like, again in 58, 59. All the horses in that race paced better than two minutes last week, and they're going to do it again today. So it's no easy uh, race at all. It's a tough race. Who uh, is another horse to beat in that race? Uh, Mr. Rude raced uh, really well last week, and I, I, lo I look for him to be a it's good again. Calgary Flutie, uh, what can I say about him? He's uh, a super little uh, maritime bread. It's really a good six-horse field, and that's coming up in the 10th. Uh, not a bad uh, undercard, I guess, in the feature, and we've also got the uh, the Atlantic Sire Stakes Championship coming up. Congratulations, Gordy, Thanks for your again, race Fred. last week. Appreciate great, dri it. great drive and a great story. His win was Chatham Hoochie, of course, trained by Alain Bergeron and uh, owned by Romeo Boucher. Thanks to Gordy for coming over and joining us, and you've now got a couple of minutes before uh, we get started with the next race here. Good luck with your selection. race they're at the gate and the gate is moving we're underway with race eight eight starters from the rail paris hustler and rod gogan jacob tutu and leroy vincent prime grand jill barrio wouldn't be john boy with lonnie stokes bar harbor tim Rossetti. after the laughter and brian moore why worry us with steve mahar from the outside march along down mike campbell eight starters eighth race 
Here they come. They're off, leaving the line. Prime Grand racing for the top. Jacob Tutu has second on the outside. Driving for third is Why Worry Us. And they race into the turn. Prime Grand pacing out on top. Why Worry Us quickly goes to second. Grabbing the three hole quickly is Bar Harbor. And they pace by the eighth. Up the back stretch, they head to the corner. Pacing in fourth, Jacob Tutu. Paris Hustler has fifth. Up on the outside after the laughter is moving and goes to sixth. Then march along down and Twin B John Boy trails the field. Up front though by the opening quarter is Prime Grand. He was there in 29 and three. Gilles Barrio has him with a length and a half lead heading towards the three eighths. Why Worry Us has second and Bar Harbor right there racing third after the laughter has moved up to fourth on the outside as they drive by the three eighths and off the top turn. Here they come for the half Prime Grand Bar Harbor out to challenge from third he comes to second. Why Worry Us is now racing third. After the laughter, hasn't seen the rail. Fourth on the outside, but he's got some cover. But Prime Grand steps to the half in a minute and four fifths. Into the racing turn, they head to the five eighths. Prime Grand and Bar Harbor at the leader's wheel, and he's now one half length off the pace, making a challenge as they drive by the five eighths and head to the three quarters. And Bar Harbor on the outside shows on top. Prime Grand has second. Why Worry Us up tight third after the laughter outside. He shows third. Why Worry Us racing fourth. March along down meets the leaders and is racing fifth. 130 and four the three quarters. Into the turn. Prime Grand back on top again. He's out of length. Bar Harbor and up on the inside. Why Worry Us racing third. Three wide is after the laughter. March along down racing there fifth and off the top turn. Prime Grand takes them home. It's Prime Grand Bar Harbor. Why Worry Us to the inside. Prime Grand, here comes after the laughter. To the inside, Why Worry Us. They're all there. Why Worry Us that the inside wins it. Prime Grand and after the laughter. Bar Harbor march along down Jacob Tutu, followed by Twin B. John Boy and Paris Hustler. Time for the mile, 2.02. parading back now the winner of the eighth race it's number seven why worry us a big yelping nine years by armbro omaha out of lady rosa hanover she by albatross owned by clifford garland of carbon air newfoundland trained by jerry shannon steve mahard rides this afternoon why worry us picks up his third win of the season this afternoon in 202 why worry us number seven for driver steve mahard Ready now with the starter for race number nine. It's a condition pace going for a first of seven hundred and fifty dollars. Horse number one, Sammy Motoring, owned by Ron McLennigan of Chatham. John Davidson in the Sulky, the two, Jig Time Knievel, owned by the Sea Winds AMG stable, driven by Gordy Hennessy. Number three, Markham Stack, owned by Bob Fitzgerald of St. John. The driver, Jill Barrio. Four, Tough Ender, owned by Joe Lindsay and the driver, Steve Mahar. A 
five three-legged pacer Rambo Derby owned by Bob O'Brien of Riverview the driver Danny O'Brien six township foxy lady owned by Linda Beckwith of Salisbury the driver Doug Beckwith behind him comes trusty bad guy the seven owned by the Gary Hill stable of Oramusto the driver is Mike Campbell Trading at the end of the field is number eight, Bellman Stream. The three-legged pacer owned by Bernie Charlton of Dartmouth. Danny Romo catch driving this afternoon. Eight starters here for race number nine. And you've got about six minutes at the Betty Windows. From the rail, Sammy Motoring and John Davidson. Jig Time Knievel with Gordy Hennessy. Markham's Tech, Jill Berrio. Tough Ender with Steve Mahar. Rambo Derby and Danny O'Brien. Township Foxy Lady and Doug Beckwith. Trusty bad guy, Mike Campbell, and from the outside, Bellman's Dream and Danny Romo. H. Dutters for the ninth race. Here they come. They're off, leaving the line. Jig time, Knievel pacing to the top. On the inside, Sammy motoring, and trusty bad guy gets away well. And he's now racing third as they hit the first turn. Markham's Tech has fourth. And racing fifth is Tough Enter, and they drive by the eighth with Jig time, Knievel. Cutting the early fraction. On the rail second is Sammy Motoring. Trusty Bad Guy third. Markham Stack has fourth. Then it's Tough Ender in fifth. Rambo Derby Township Foxy Lady. The trailer is Bellman's Dream. They race single file by the opening quarter. Jig Time Knievel first there in 30 and 2. Gordy Hennessy leading his charge into the turn with a length and a quarter lead over Sammy Motoring. Racing third is Trusty Bad Guy. Markham Stack still racing in fourth with Tough Ender. Pacing fifth, the field still races. Single file, no movement yet as they round the turn and approach the half with Jig Time Knievel showing the way. Sammy Motoring and Trusty Bad Guy still has third. Markham Tech has fourth. There goes Tough Ender now. Off the rail, he's first to move and he comes out from fifth. By the half, Jig Time Knievel was there in 101 and one. Into the turn, they head to the 5 8 Jig Time Knievel on top, a length and a half. Sammy Motoring and Trusty Bad Guy has third. Tough Ender now racing fourth on the outside. By the 5 eighths, they head to the three quarters. Jig Time Knievel. Here goes Sammy Motoring. Out to challenge from second. Racing third. Trusty Bad Guy. Tough Ender has fourth. Markham's Tech racing fifth. Rambo Derby. Township Foxy Lady and Bellman's Dream. 131 and 2 the three quarters. Into the turn. Jig time can evil Sammy motoring and trusty bad guy. It's been that way the entire mile, and they hit the 7 8 that way and off the top turn. Jig time can evil takes them home. It's Jig time can evil Sammy motoring. Trusty bad guy and tough ender had fourth, but it's going to be Jig time can evil by about two lengths, and here they are. Jig Time Knievel wins it. Sammy Motoring and Trusty Bad Guy. Tough Ender, Rambo Derby Township, Foxy Lady, Bellman's Dream, and Markham's Tech. Time for the mile. 201 and 3. Parade back now, the winner of race number nine. It's number two, Jig Time Knievel, a chestnut horse, seven years by Angel's Wave out of Bond Flash, Shibai Flash About. Owned by the Sea Winds AMG Stables of Moncton, trained by Wayne Mahar, Gordy Hennessy drives this afternoon. This is the fifth win of the season for Jig Time Knievel this afternoon in two, one, and three. Horse facing his last half in a minute and two fifths. Number two, Jig Time Knievel, Gordy Hennessy.
Racing Parade for you now, folks. The starter is in race number 10. Race number 10 is for winners over $1,201. Their last six, they go for a purse of $1,200. Six starters, Triactor, Quinello, win, place, and show. Your betting features eight minutes at the Mutuals here for race number 10. First to parade is the one horse, RB Gladimir, owned by Roser Barrio, the driver, Jill Barrio. The two, Mr. Rude, owned by Sandra Foley of Fredericton. The driver, Steve Mahar. The three, Calgary Flutie, owned by Robert Hume of Woodstock. The driver, Frank Fagan, Jr. The four is Ellis Fieldster, owned by Tony Piers of Chupanacandy, Nova Scotia. The driver, Jim Davis. The five, the final Brett, the three-legged pacer, owned by Joyce Boucher and Edmund Gagnon of Moncton. The driver, Gordy Hennessy. And horse six is Alma Hurst Hurricane, owned by Greg Fox, Elton Bustard, and Charles Calhoun. Of Woodstock, Danny Romo in the Sulky. Six starters here for race number 10. We go to post in about seven minutes. Shutters for the 10th race are at the gate. And the gate is moving. Well, we're underway with race number 10. The $1,200, six starters from the rail, R.B. Gladimir, Jill Barrio. Mr. Rude and Steve Mahar, Calgary Flutie, Frankie Fagan, Ellis Filster and Jim Davis. The final Brett, Gordy Hennessy, and from the outside, Alma Hurst Hurricane, Danny Romo. Six starters for the 10th race. Here they come. There, off and leaving the line, R.B. Gladimir from the rail, pacing to the top, Calgary Flutie outside, racing at second, Mr. Rude has third as they race into the turn, Ellis Seelster paces in fourth, then it's the final breath, and Alma Hurst Hurricane trails, and they drive by the eighth, single file as they head to the quarter, R.B. Gladimir on top by a length and a half, Calgary Flutie gets to the rail second, and Mr. Rude pacing in third, Ellis Seelster, the final breath, prancing fourth, and trailing is Alma Hurst Hurricane, our big Vladimir opening quarter in 29-2, and, and he takes the field into the turn to the 3-8. With a length and a quarter lead now over Calgary Flutie. On the rail third is Mr. Rude, Ellis Seelster fourth. It goes the final breath. Off the challenge from a fifth, and Alma Hurst Hurricane still trails, and they race to the half with movement on the outside. R.B. Gladimir, here comes Mr. Rude. He's out to second. On the rail, Calgary Flutie third. Ellis Seelster moves fourth. The final Brett, Alma Hurst Hurricane, is the trailer. One minute flat, they hit the half. Into the turn, they head to the 5 eighths, and they're battling for the top. On the rail, R.B. Gladimir, Mr. Root outside, challenging second. Calgary Flutie has third, and they're by the 5 eighths. Up the backstretch, Ellis Seelster racing fourth. The final Brett, Alma Hurst Hurricane, and they drive to the three quarters. R.B. Gladimir, three parts of a length. Mr. Rood and Calgary Flutie, the final brat, up on the outside to fourth. Three quarters and one, 28 and two. Third quarter, 28 and two. Into the turn, they head to the 7 8. R.B. Gladimir, Calgary Flutie back to second. Outside third, Mr. Rood. On the outside fourth, the final brat, and they race for home. It's R.B. Gladimir. Here comes Calgary Flutie on the outside. Racing third is Mr. Rood. Calgary Flutie now. Mr. Rude racing on the outside third, and here they are, Calgary Flutie, R.B. Gladimir, Mr. Rude, the final brat, Elmerhurst Hurricane, and Ellis Steelster. Time for the mile, 158 and two.
along great with Calgary Flutie. Uh, good to see you back on the bike, and you're seeming to putting together a pretty good combination here with this horse. Well, I think it's a real nice horse, and I'm just happy to be driving him. You uh, had a wicked third quarter, but you made a decision early on in the mile to stay behind Jill Berrios' horse. What were you thinking at that point? Well, I moved on Jill's horse last week, and he took me a long ways before I got by him, so uh, uh, it looked like Stevie couldn't get by him too early either, so I moved him back behind him. That's a great trip for this time of year. Yeah, nice horse. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, Frank Fagan. Uh, the winning driver here, 158 and 2 is the time of the mile. Robert Hume is the uh, owner and trainer of this horse, and he's just had a great time with this fellow as a three-year-old and now at the age of four. At the line now, the winner of this 10th race, $1,200 feature, number three, Calgary Flutie. Round horse four by Quality Blue Chip out of Mattiera Hanover. She by best of all. Owned and trained by Bob Hume of Woodstock. Frankie Fagan Jr. driving this afternoon. Seventh win of the season for Calgary Flutie. A season's best this afternoon, 158 and two. Ladies and gentlemen, Exhibition Park and the Atlantic Pet Standard Bred Breeders Association. Pleased to present the championship final this afternoon of the Atlantic Sire Stakes for two-year-old pacing fillies. The purse this afternoon is $13,660. Here are the starters. Number one is a daughter of winner's accolade. Bred by William Bassett and owned by the Gemini Hills and Clonmel Stables of St. John. For trainer Danny O'Brien, Steve Mahar has number one, Dandy Winner. Number 1A is a daughter of Nukes Globell, bred by Bob Webster. Entered by the Gemini Hills and Clonmel Stables. Here's trainer driver Danny O'Brien with 1A, Island Reba. Next is a daughter of Freedom Fella, bred by James Forsyth and owned by Ernest Gillen. Kevin Keith Cameron of Halifax and Danny Romo. For trainer Jay Green, Danny Romo drives Fussy's Girl Grace. Number three is a daughter of Basie, owned and bred by Gordon McLean. Trainer driver Daryl McLean with number three, Flaming Beauty. Number four has been scratched. Next is a daughter of Nukes Lobel, bred by Bob Webster and owned by Bob Craswell of Sherwood, Prince Edward Island. Here's trainer driver Albert Bernard with number five, Island Ribbon. Number six is a daughter of the Den Man, bred by Virgin and Boyd White. Owned by Maura Kerr and Wayne Burley of Truro, Nova Scotia, trainer driver Jimmy Davis has the six, maybe Ella. Number seven is a daughter of Drop Off, owned, bred, and trained by Ralph Frizzell of Winslow, Prince Edward Island. Here's Paul McDonald with the seven. A three-legged pacer, Blue Meadow Magic. And rounding out our field is a daughter of the Denman, bred by the R.G. McGroup Limited of Bathurst, owned by Sean Dooley of St. John and his father, Bob of Elgin. Trainer driver, Sean Dooley, with number nine, Gaelic Coffee. Eight starters for our featured 11th race. It's the $13,660 final of the Atlantic Sire Stakes for two-year-old pacing fillies. These freshman fillies race the entire season for this day, the championship final. Five minutes for wagering in our 11th race with Exactor and Daily Double features. Exactor, Daily Double, win place and show betting for race 11. feature the championship final of the Atlantic Sire Stakes for two-year-old pacing fillies. Dandy winner and Steve Mahar. Bussy's girl Grace, Danny Romo. Daryl McLean drives Flaming Beauty from post three. Gaelic Coffee and Sean Dooley. Island Ribbon and Albert Bernard. Maybe Ella, Jim Davis. Island Reba, Danny O'Brien. From the outside, Blue Meadow Magic and Paul McDonald. Eight starters for the 11th race. Here they come. They're off, leaving the line. Flaming Beauty from post three paces for the top. To the inside, Fussy's Girl Grace and Dandy Winner. Island Ribbon looks to tuck in fourth as they race into that first turn. Fussy's Girl Grace pacing out on top. Bit rough in the corner, tight going. And they race by that turn. Maybe Ella is off stride as they head up the back stretch to the quarter. 
On the outside, moving to the top, Flaming Beauty, Fussy's Girl Grace now to the front. Then Dandy Winner, Flaming Beauty racing third. Island Ribbon has fourth. Gaelic Toffee pacing fifth. Opening quarter, 29 and three. Then Island Reba, Blue Meadow Magic, and maybe Yellowback pacing trails the field. Into the turn, they head to the 3-8, Fussy's Girl Grace. On the outside, Flaming Beauty now on the move. Comes to second, Dandy Winner racing third. Outside fourth with cover is Island Ribbon as they race through the stretch for the half. Fussy's Girl Gray shows the way. Flaming Beauty tipping out three wide comes Island Ribbon and they head to the half. Three wide, Island Ribbon bids for the top. Flaming Beauty has second, the half in a relaxed 102 and one. Fussy's Girl Grace racing third, Island Reba has fourth. Into the turn for the second time. Flaming Beauty and Island Ribbon on the outside. Lays second and they're by the 5 8 Up the back stretch. They head to the three quarters. Flaming Beauty, Island Ribbon. On the outside, a charge to the top. Flaming Beauty second. Island Reba has come to third. Fussy's Girl Grace has fourth. Maybe Ella racing fifth. Blue Meadow Magic followed by Dandy Winner and Gaelic Coffee. Three quarters and one, 31. 28 and four, the third quarter. Into the turn, Island Ribbon now. On top a length and a half. Flaming Beauty and Island Reba racing third. Fussy's Girl Grace and off the top turn. The Phillies come home, Island Ribbon on the outside. Island Reba, Flaming Beauty is there. But as they approach the line, Island Ribbon wins the championship of the Atlantic Sire Stakes for two-year-old pacing Phillies. Flaming Beauty second, Island Reba third. Then maybe Ella, Gaelic Coffee, Fussy's Girl Grace, Blue Meadow Magic, Dandy Winner. Time for the mile, 2.02. Inquiry sign is posted. Hold your tickets, please. The inquiry sign goes up. Reason for the inquiry. Judge is looking into possible interference in the first turn. That's the reason for the inquiry. Possible first turn interference. Hold your tickets, please. And the reason for the inquiry, judges looking into possible first turn interference. Possible first turn interference is the reason for the inquiry.
Gary Sign is down and parading back his number five Island Ribbon with Albert Bernard. And Albert, another tremendous performance for your filly. That third quarter in 28 and 4 was uh, just amazing. And uh, she was really, really sharp today. She felt awful good in the lines there. Come to the half. I, usually in a race like this, you don't make a three wide move at the half. But she felt so strong and was on the iron so much. I said, I think I'll take a run at them here. I didn't know that the third quarter is 28 and 4. She was uh, pacing strong. I lost her a little bit in the turn there. It would have been quicker only for that. Can I ask you about the first turn? I didn't get a good look at that personally. And uh, uh, well, I don't know. I was uh, when I seen them all leave, and I started in the hole. And there was all kinds of room when I started started in. I didn't go all the way in because of uh, of that their winter mare that had made a break uh, before off the rail, and I was just kind of biding her time. And I don't know what what the Sean's horse drove up on top of me or what happened. But I was nobody there when I started in. That's all I know. Well, your filly's gone over $50,000 in earnings. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Chris. That's the 12th win and 14 starts for Island Ribbon, and she has declared the winner here. 270 favorite on the board. At the winner's circle now, the winner of the 11th race, the $13,660 final of the Atlantic Sire Stakes for two-year-old pacing fillies. Welcome back, a filly that has basically dominated this circuit all season long. She continued that domination this afternoon. The winner number five, Island Ribbon. A Bay Philly two years by Nukes Lobel out of the next in Curious. She by Curtis Hanover. Owned by Robert Craswell of Sherwood Prince Edward Island. Trained by Bob Webster. Rather bred by Bob Webster. Trained and driven by Albert Bernard. Island Ribbon picks up her 12th win from 14 lifetime starts and this afternoon she wins in 202. Her last half in 59 and 4. Welcome to Shutters for the 12th and final now coming on the racetrack. We parade now, ladies and gentlemen, our 12th race. It's for Pacers. A condition pace for $1,000. Eight stunners. Rating now number one, Comanche Fern, owned by Jim Fernley of Lower Haynesville. Tim Rossetti driving. Two is Courageous Josie, owned and driven by Ricky Collins of St. John. Number three, Noble Ideal, owned by Murray Calder of Rossay, the driver Jill Barrio. Four is Sonny Mack. Owned by Joanne Davies of St. John, the driver is Brian Moore. Number five, Armbro Foxy. Owned by Linda Beckwith of Salisbury, the driver John Davidson. Six is Four Men Only. Owned by Clifford Garland of Carboneer, Newfoundland. Sean Shannon Drive. Number seven is Sweet Miss Marlowe. Owned by Galen Dempsey of Rolling Dam with Steve Mahar driving. And the eight is Prince Lee Steady. Owned by Tony Piers of Shubenacadie, Nova Scotia. Jimmy Davis driving. Eight starters for the 12th and final two betting features, Triactor and Aquinella. This is your second half of your late daily double. We'll go to post in seven minutes. Eight starters for the 12th and final. Here they come. They're off a great start, leaving the line. Comanche Fern from the rail. Sunny Mac in the middle of the racetrack. On the outside goes Armbro Foxy and Princely Steady. But as they hit the turn, Comanche Fern is first there, taking a two-length lead to the eighth. Courageous Josie as second, outside third, Sonny Mac. They head to the quarter with Noble Ideal racing fourth along the rail. Armbro Foxy fifth on the outside. And then it's Sweet Miss Marlowe, Princely Steady, four men only trails the field, and they race by the opening quarter. Comanche Fern takes them by that marker in 29 and three. Into the turn, they drive to the free eighth. Tim Merzetti and Comanche Fern showing the way. Sonny Mac is on the outside park. Courageous Josie doing the park job, racing third along the rail. Armbro Foxy has covered but sits parked four. Driving around the turn, four on the inside, four on the outside as they approach the half. Comanche Fern shows the way. Sonny Mac laying second park. Courageous Josie, an uptight third. Armbro Foxy fourth on the outside, and they pace the half a minute and two fifths. The noble ideal Prince Lee steady. Four men only in Sweet Miss Marlowe, and they hit the turn for the second time. Comanche Fern cuts it out. Sonny Mac lays second. Courageous Josie, not much racing room. Third along the rail, and they tip out three wide. That's Armbro Foxy, three abreast, heading up the backstretch. For the three quarters, Armbro Foxy on the outside, challenging Comanche Fern. Sonny Mac has third. Now Courageous Josie races third as they race neck and neck for the lead by the three quarters in 132 into the turn Comanche Fern and Armbro Foxy neck and neck for the lead Courageous Josie is with the leaders she'll see some room down the stretch in fact she tips out three wide now three wide around the
around the turn. Here they come for home. It's Comanche, Fern, and Armbro Foxy. Courageous Josie, faster than them all. He, she comes to the top. In between them, Noble Ideal is closing strong out of nowhere. And here they are. At the line, tight between Noble Ideal and Courageous Josie. Comanche, Fern, Armbro Foxy. Followed by Sweet Miss Marlowe. Four men only. Sunny Mac, Prince Lee, steady. Time for the mile. 201 and 3. And we parade back now the unofficial winner of the 12th and final. It's number two, Courageous Josie. Courageous Josie is a Bay Mare six years by Courageous Red out of Avon Singalong. She by Scarlet Skipper. Owned, trained, and driven by Ricky Collins of St. John. Mare picks up her 14th win of the season this afternoon. It's her fifth win from her last six starts. Six wins from seven starts for Courageous Josie, winning our 12th race this afternoon in 201 and 3. fast and we saw lots of great miles here this afternoon. The big story of the day of course, Island Ribbon and Albert Bernard winning in the $14,000 Atlantic Sire Stakes Championship Final for two-year-old pacing fillies. She's 12 for 14 for the season. Just a tremendous uh, performance from this filly all year long and it's very, very difficult to race the stakes circuit, win the Dairy Queen, win the Atlantic Sire's Final and uh, she's done it all here this year, eclipsing $50,000 in lifetime earnings. Island Ribbon in 202 today in that third quarter in 28 and 4. And uh, that was just a tremendous trip. The top drivers of the day, Jill Berrio, Gordy Hennessy, and Steve Mahar, each with two dash wins. Fastest mile, Calgary Flutie and Frank Fagan Jr. And what a treat it is to see Frankie back in the sulky again. Uh, Calgary Flutie moving right along, uh, coming into his own as a four year old. He was very, very solid as two and three. And uh, for Robert Hume of Woodstock, if you're joining us from Bleachers, I know that was a thrill for you to see. Calgary Flutie winning in sub two minute speed. Two horses picking up uh, wins, and it's no shock that they are because Courageous Josie has 14 now for the year. Omaha Gambler, 16th win of the season, and he just keeps going strong in the claiming rank. For all of us here uh, at St. John's Exhibition Park Raceway, we'd like to thank you for joining us. The pair mutual handle, $72,000 on the day. And again, we want to remind you that uh, the next action here on the Maritime Teletrack Network comes up tomorrow afternoon from Truro Raceway in Nova Scotia on Bible Hill at 1.30, the post time.